I hold my next guest's feet to the fire over that inquiry. Has Washington, D.C. changed him? He's a Tea Partier who's now working with New York Democratic Senator Chuck Schumer on giving foreigners visas without a work permit if they buy a home worth at least a half a million dollars in cash. He has sought to regulate a private company named Google. But isn't this the kind of government meddling that got this nation into the fiscal mess in the first place? Here with answers is Utah Republican Senator, whose generous blurb is on my new book, Senator Mike Lee. Senator, it's a pleasure. Welcome here. Thank you. How corrupting is the, is the crowd in that building uh, behind us sort of seducing everybody into big government? Do you feel the pull? Members of Congress like to please. It's pleasing people that got them elected. They want to get reelected. So they tend to spend more, and that results in bigger government. And that results in people who come there promising small government collapsing on their principles. Sometimes, regrettably, yes. And you see that happening. Occasionally. All right. Have, have you uh, tinkered with any of your principles when you want to investigate, use the power of the federal government to investigate Google, or when you want to give people who have uh, wealth, half a million dollars in the bank, the opportunity to come here where they otherwise would stand online, rich immigrants? No, in both instances, I'm trying to minimize rather than expand the role of government. Look, we, so? we've got to fix the immigration problem that we have in this country. One of the things that we need to do is we need to fix legal immigration. We have a number of laws that result in fees says issuing from time to time, but right. the process can take years, it can cost a lot of money, and it tends to discourage the very kind of immigration that we want to have happen right here in this country. All right, so the five, if, if you buy a house for 500000 in cash, you can't use a mortgage, you can come here if you spend time in the house. That is an effort to reduce the bureaucracy that keeps people from getting here, and it's also a way to get some foreign cash into the country. Is that the theory behind this? Exactly. And if somebody wants to buy a house here, they pay cash for it, they ought to be able to to spend some time in that house. All right, you're a, you're a free market guy. You believe the government should reside within the confines of the Constitution. What business is it of the Congress, what Google does? Well, we had a hearing a few weeks ago, and we asked some difficult questions. Ultimately, I want to keep the government out of regulating the Internet, and that's one of the reasons why I asked those questions. I think Google can, and has in the past, and will in the future, uh, proven itself able to regulate itself. And, and, and I think that's what's going to happen there. I don't want the government to intrude more into their what? business or anyone else's. Okay, all right. Uh, the good idea, but you, you know that sometimes good ideas have adverse consequences when the government gets involved. Is the purpose of the inquiry in Google any legislation, or is the purpose to keep the government off of Google's back? My purpose is to keep the government off Google's back. All right, when, when the government says to Google, you know those uh, tapes that the kids in Lower Manhattan took of the police kicking the daylights out of them, uh, the YouTube stuff, would you take it down? Should Google comply with requests like that, or should Google post whatever people want to post up, uh, up there? You know, from time to time, they might get a court order. They might have something that comes their way, and I'm, I'm not going to advise anyone not to comply with what the law requires of them. But generally speaking, I want the government to stay out of people's business, including Google. Okay. Um, was the Constitution written to unleash the government or to restrain it? It was written to restrain it. This was a, a reaction to what we had faced under our overseers from, colonial, uh, from our colonial days with Great Britain. Uh, the mindset dating back to uh, the writings at least of Judge Blackstone was that Parliament had the power to do pretty much anything it wanted to, and it did. And so our founding fathers wisely said we have to have a document that will permanently restrain government power, especially at the national level where that power is most dangerous. All right. Now, you say that not just as a senator, but as a, a sophisticated legal scholar. You clerked for Justice Samuel Alito, Jr. on the Supreme Court of the United States. You come from a very famous family of lawyers, one of whom uh, is you yourself. How many of your colleagues up there agree with you that the Constitution was written not to unleash, but to restrain? You know, I don't have a precise tally in part because everybody takes a slightly different view of it. But I will tell you that there are a growing number of senators and members of the House who share this view that you and I share in common, which is that the Constitution is there to restrain government power. Most importantly, the people are waking up to it. And that's, I think, going to produce a result in 2012 that will make what happened in 2010 look like a Sunday Okay, picture. later on in the show, your uh, colleague, Senator Ron Johnson from Wisconsin, will be here with some uh, charts that the uh, folks on Freedom Watch and the folks on his staff created, showing that even under Republican proposals, not the one Rand Paul offered in the Senate that didn't make it out of the Senate, but Republican proposals in the House, government continues to grow. They're not even looking at President Obama's proposals. And that what the Republicans in the House call a cut is actually a reduction in the original proposed increase, but it's still more spending each year. 
if Republicans, when they control the House, animated by the Tea Party, increase spending each year, what hope do we have that we will ever begin to see a decrease in spending, a living within the government's limits? Or is there no such hope? It certainly becomes discouraging at this point. But I'll put it this way. The people throughout this country are waking up to the fact that we can't continue to spend this way. We can't continue to tell people, yeah, we're cutting, when in fact we're expanding what government spends. And so the cuts are inevitable. They will be made one way or another. It's just a matter of how draconian, how painful, how immediate, and how abrupt they will be. Anything good going to come from the super committee? You know, I... I or do the lobbyists know more about it than you do? I, I continue to harbor the same concerns about this, the, the super committee that I had in the very beginning, which is you shouldn't take a process that's designed to work in two open, transparent bodies of Congress. Right. One consisting of 100, the other of 435. And put it behind closed doors. Put it behind closed doors with only 12 people and right. say, whatever they come up with, you give it an up or down vote, no opportunity for amendment. That's Senator, wrong. Senator Mike Lee, it's always a pleasure. Thanks for joining us.